Hello, welcome to New Life Scientific. Today we're going to be talking about the PAL systems by CTC Analytics. Uh, this particular model is uh, one of their smaller, more diminutive models, the HTC PAL. Um, can be configured for gas chromography or liquid chromography. Uh, this particular unit is very short. They do make the HTS. Um, which is a much longer unit and the, the double-headed unit. There's, there's, there's a wide variety. Uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit, a bit about the, the maintenance of your system, um, how to upgrade your software, uh, add objects. Um, what I mean by an object is the injector valve and motor drive is an object. You need to teach the system about this device. Uh, just as you do with your, your washer, your multi uh, options, uh, and a host of other options. There are cooler stacks available. There's, there's, there's a long list of items. We need to teach a system how to do that. Uh, on all the, the CTC systems we sell, we do include a, a CD, which does allow you to uh, upgrade your firmware. Uh, or downgrade it, back up your software, restore it, uh, and teach it about those objects. Uh, where you, it is um, two pieces of software to do that. Uh, the PAL loader software, which is connected to the, the system with using a DBMine serial cable uh, in a null modem format. Uh, we do, these are not included with the system. Uh, they are available online, and if you insist, we'd be more than happy to, to buy you one and uh, sell it to you. They are not very expensive, um, 20 bucks or so. Um, anyway, the, the PAL loader is the one to change your firmware um, settings uh, or to upgrade, downgrade, back up your system. Uh, it's very point and click uh, where you tell it you want to update and when you do that, it's going to, you need to browse to the version of your software. Um, the CD comes with several different versions. Uh, normally the, uh, the last major version, such as 2.4, 0 .2, 2 .5 .2, 3 .04, those are the last version numbers. Um, Anyway, your browse tells you where you want to go. Um, of course, you want to back up your unit. You would click back up, tell it where you want to put it. You'd back up. It takes a few minutes to do, so I'm not going to do the final backup here. It'll log into the system, download the information, save it to your hard to your hard drive. Um, you can also get info to find out what version you have. Maybe you've got software that wants a newer, better version. Now, when you do, when it is logging in, you'll notice on the, the control pendant that it tells you the screen is, the load, loader is active. So that is no longer a functioning unit while this is in the software. Um, so it gives you your serial numbers, your ROM versions, your software versions, your head numbers, all that, okay? After you do, so, Let's say you were do an update. After you do an update, there is not going to be any objects loaded. So you're going to go to your controller, and you're not going to be able to um, tell it that you want to uh, test the, uh, uh, the drive motor or the washer or to change the location. Both of those things we'll be talking more about in just a few minutes. Um, Can also, you should also start or tell it to restart your PAL unit, which is happening now. Once that's done, we can exit. Now the object manager is where you teach it how to load different objects. This is these are this this software is installed on the hard drive, and all the list of different objects are there. Um, even some 
objects that CTTC does not manufacture. If we were going to add a stack cooler to this, of course, those would be located in your stack cooler. It's just a matter of clicking and telling it to send the object over to the machine. Uh, since these are such a, the, some computers could have all these loaded into them, but because these are such a small control and have a limited amount of memory, and because the list is so long, they do not always show them. Evidently, it's not finding the tray cooler out there. Anyway, which we don't have hooked up. Um, so if you do get a uh, unit from somebody other than us, we do configure the units with the, um, all the objects involved. That is how you're going to do it. Or if you want to add one of our systems, you're going to add a cooler, a different tray, a different rack. Um, so that's why you're going to want that unit there, those CDs. Um, of course, when I was talking about location, these can be configured not just with two valves or two washers or a stack cooler, but also they can be placed anywhere along this, within this frame. You need to teach it where each one of those is, and you need to periodically update those locations because the machinery is going to get a little bit out, sometimes out of slight minor adjustments. Very easy to do. Um, you, you go to your menu. We're going to go into the setup. And here's where the objects is also where you change your, uh, the time and such. You go into your object and tell it wash stations. That you, this fast wash has two wash stations, so we have we can be configured individually. We go to the wash station, and here's where we teach the position. So when we push our center button, it's going to that motor is going to take over and go to its position at 189 millimeters. If we're off, if we know that we're off a little bit, we can adjust it. And by turning the knob while that position X line is highlighted, the head will move to that. And as it's doing tenths of a millimeter, so it's very, very picky. Uh, and it has to be ex exact. There's going to be a needle having to drop into a very small hole. So once we're set, we push the button and we can then set our other positions. You can also check your position. Uh, of a unit by just pressing the F1 on this, which corresponds with the check position. It warns us it's going to move. It first goes to the home position, which is its zero position, and then checks your head position. I'm just a little bit uh, uh, to the back, so I could adjust that. Uh, same way with the uh, valve position. If I go to, if I escape, it's going to rehome. Take me up one level into the program, one level up, and I can go into my injectors. And I can set it to look at the, the chromatography. The, and again, check my position. Do the homing again. Now here is where it has to get a needle down that little hole. That one I've adjusted spot on, which it has to be to run one of those. And those you adjust in tenths of a millimeter. This particular unit um, is configured with a Maldi auto sampler. Um, although it does take optional software, which is not included in this system, the Maldi will be included with it. That is your tool there. That would be hooked into your system. This, pro, uh, this then becomes the tool attachment. The unit will actually go and pick it up and it is, it is configured in the tools. As the moldy option. 
We can actually tell it to check position. It does warn, we wanna remove the tool. I know I have this set correctly, but I'm gonna take it out anyway. And then that would drop onto the tool and then we'd be able to pick it up and move it to, to, um, to auto sample, to fractional collect the sample into our trays. That's what the moldy option is. Uh, lastly, uh, on these units, when, w this would be the way this unit would ship. Um, this tray for shipping purposes may be detached. Now when you reassemble it, it can be assembled on this side or of course outside the framework because this is going to tap in uh, to your wash option here. These are going to be set up to hold bottles. Uh, we typically do not sell them with bottles, although that is possible. Um, the reason I would say move this to the outside is you, these are going to be in the way of your moving arm. So if you're outside the frame, your hosing and that won't get caught in the arm. Um, that's the basic maintenance uh, on an HCC or a CTC PAL system. If you have any questions, um, give us a call, contact us online. Uh, again, this is uh, New Life Scientific located in Critersville, Ohio. Thank you very much. Have a great day.